Hello everybody, my name is Mr. E and welcome to this special episode where we're going to be talking about yesterday's protests in Melbourne and that might be going for the next couple of days while the Land Forces 2024 International Land Defence Exposition is underway in Melbourne CBD. Now, the media beat up and sensationalism around this one has just been, you know, the Melbourne protests, civil unrest appalling but like what are these people actually protesting about i don't think that's really been covered properly at all so i've gone to their f official website that's for the land forces 2024 international land defense exposition and this is the premier platform for interaction between defense industry and government of all levels to meet do business and discuss the opportunities and challenges facing the global land defense markets. So what this is, okay, is an opportunity for the global military industrial complex to showcase its new weapons of mass destruction, warfare and death, and for industry insiders and experts and people in government to get together and make deals deals in death that's what this is about and that's what these students mostly let's be honest here they're a bunch of kids these students are protesting about they are trying to make it difficult for these people to just you know fly in under the radar and kind of have these meetings without being this being brought to the general public's attention and so that's the strategy for these protesters here to have People like you and me talking about something as despicable as this going on in the heart of Melbourne's CBD. And it's working. It's got the media talking. It's got you and me having a little, you know, conversation about this as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at an ABC piece on this and like i'll filter through some of the propaganda for you um so you've got to have got an understanding as to how the free market system the capitalist establishment kind of controls the conversation uh to make you think that this whole thing is irrelevant and that you know people exercising their dem democratic rights um is kind of not efficient for a market society and should be stamped out and we should move towards a form of authoritarianism to protect ourselves from these evil, evil protesters. So let's just see what the ABC has to start with here. Fires. 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 Look at Flash that. Grenades. Grenades. On city streets. Protests in the middle of Melbourne against an international weapons expo turned violent. Turned violent. Wouldn't even recognise this as peaceful Australia. The real disruptors, the real opposers of peace are the people assembled in that room. They are acting in encouragement. It's really unfortunate they have like, you know, they pick people from the protesters to speak that always look like that. Um, they don't do the cause any justice, but he's got a good point. Like the real people that are, you know, violent and causing, you know, international deaths and things like that are the people inside that expo. But let's not talk about that. Look, this footage to paint the picture of like what is said in the title of this video, which is Victoria Police Appalled by protesters at Land Forces Expo in Melbourne. Now, what the footage that they've used to kind of, I don't know, um, paint the picture of this dystopian world that you wouldn't recognize as being, you know, the peaceful uh, CBD of Melbourne. The footage that they've used so far or in that piece uh, didn't actually display, I think, any violence on behalf of protesters. If anything, yes, there's some burning stuff around, which is, you know, you know, unimaginable that things can burn. Um, and like there was a chair thrown in one of the in one of the pieces of footage there, I think, from a protester. But apart from that, it was just all police basically using a force, necessary or not, whatever, uh, force against members of the public. That's that's what the footage was showing there. But like the 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 narration that was going over the top and the way it's all cut together is to show that like yeah we're living in some Mad Max world right here and like you know um, the end of civilization we as we know it is just around the corner. But like again, 
didn't seem any violence or much violence from the protesters, but still, they're appalling. To war, they trickle down to militias all around the world, civil wars, they help kill kids in Gaza. More than a thousand protesters gathered, blocking streets around the convention center. Shame! Shit, look at that guy with the suit Many on. Of the expo's attendees There's another guy with a suit. Run the gauntlet. There's the gauntlet. Some delegates needed protection to enter the conference. Protection. Before police <gasps> pushed protesters further he back. He didn't look like just he needed much protection, that guy. That, you know, this event has been he just looks like he's being government. escorted. Now, see, this is something that I've been talking about a lot in my content, if you're familiar with it. The police do not exist, okay? They do not exist as public servants. The police force came into existence to protect private property. That's it. And we can see this on showcase, on display, right here in this arrangement. Now, many people think that they're there for emergency services and, you know, public safety and, um, you know, providing, I guess, community services. That is secondary and has been imposed upon them, but their primary objective is protecting private property and by extension, private interests. You have a group of basically capitalists that are meeting in this room with big heads of government and like meeting inside this convention center sorry to talk about things that the general public doesn't have access to so like i don't know if i've talked about that already but like you can't access this convention as a member of the public you must have you must be able to demonstrate that you are in the business of like warfare contracting to states or to other companies you have to prove that you're somehow in the business of warfare to be able to get access to this expo so the police have been called in in this situation to make sure that members of the expo members of the military industrial complex globally are able to safely get from the car park to the expo they are escorting them to the expo they've got no interest in public safety here all of the people that they have been pushing up against and fighting with the police that is are members of the public. If they cared about public safety, they would have a strategy on dealing with these protesters properly. They'd be speaking to the heads of the organizations running the protests, um, and they would be coordinating with them in a true community spirit fashion. The police have rocked up to this event only to, like you saw it, they referred to it as the gauntlet. You saw them escorting members of the expo safely through a rabble of, you know, student protesters. They are there to escort members of the military industrial complex to their merchants of death exposition so they can trade in warfare. That's what the police are doing here. They are not public servants in this regard. They are just protecting the interests of the establishment and the capitalist class. And I'm glad I've been able to give you a real life situation here to kind of explain the what Victorian I'm always government going on about. won't say what hosting the expo has cost taxpayers, but claims it will bring in seventy million dollars. $70 million bringing in. We're just going to make up that number, throw it around. But there has been numbers about what this has cost so far. And it's so far upwards of $10 million just to supply some of the police force that was necessary to protect the members of the exposition. Not, not to protect the general public of Melbourne and to look after the CBD. No, to escort and make sure these people have safe clearance going from their car park to the expo. That's all they've spent money on. And so what they started to do eventually was like, you can see this woman here with the megaphone, they got two in the face of the members of this expo. And so the police moved in, they were given the orders and started pushing the protesters back so these people would be left alone. This is the entire point of this protest is so these people are in the faces of these merchants of death so they feel uncomfortable walking to make deals 
in trading in arms and warfare. And so the police at one point were given the order and they were like, no, these people can't be uncomfortable going to and from this expo anymore. It's time to clear out the public. And there you go. That's how this protest turned violent was because they were clearing out members of the public to protect this special interest group. There's your violence for you. There is the right to protest peacefully, of course, but to behave in such a disgraceful way towards members of Victoria Police who are there doing their job, who are there doing their job to protect... Yeah, we've talked about their job. And like, look at these police officers, okay? It's not like they rocked up to this event because like, you know, you needed a few extra police security personnel at an event. Um, they've come fully prepared. They've got riot gear on. They are here to control the public. They're not here to just do their job. Like they just wanted to rock up and do their nine to five. These people are here for crowd control purposes, which is what the police is intended to do, to protect private interest, interests from the general population. But the narrative will be, and I bet you, you will hear it a number of times in this video and in the media generally, that the police were under attack by unruly student protesters. These poor police officers that just try to do their job and they're under attack all the time by evil anti-war pro-Palestine students. The poor officers. Community safety. The protesters have just said that they're deciding to pull back momentarily. They are planning to come back to continue uh, this campaign, but you can see the numbers have thinned out. The numbers of police, however, have not. Victoria see? Police says this is potentially their biggest operation in more than 20 years. Victoria Police they're going to stick around to protect private interests. As police and horses were targeted. Two dozen officers, including some from interstate, needed medical attention. The police chief claiming some were sprayed with a low-grade acid. They come here to protest against anti-war, so presumably anti-violence. Uh, the only way I can describe them is... Presumably anti-violence. A bunch of hypocrites. Their conduct today was absolutely appalling. <laughs> I'm sure you think that was really insightful, don't you, police commissioner? Now, let me tell you, it's not as deep as you think it is. These people are anti-war, okay? So they are rallying against the military industrial complex that you and your puppets here are being used to protect. You're not serving the public. You're not helping anybody else out, but a bunch of rich people who trade in death. That's why they are happy to be sprayed. Like, look at this guy. He's getting, he's getting maced in the face, but he's got some principles that he's sticking up for. What do you stick up for? Calling a bunch of students hypocrites because they resisted police brutality at the behest of merchants of death. Hypocrites is a good word. I'm sure you're very happy with yourself for finding that one in the dictionary so you could use it. Now, let's see what other propaganda they've got on display for us, because this is starting to get really annoying, actually, and starting to get under my skin. <laughs> It's police brutality. You can see it. We're peaceful protesters and they sprayed us like this. The Greens are calling for an inquiry into police tactics, accusing officers of using excessive force, with one MP attending. Since I turned up, I've seen the police deploy an absolutely disgusting amount of force against protesters. All I can say is that's rubbish. We have conducted ourselves appropriately. We have conducted ourselves properly. Police say they will be back out in force tomorrow, but are hoping for a quieter day. And Natalie Whiting joins us now. Nat, what's expected over the coming days? 
Well, Tam, the conference has wrapped up for today, but you may be able to see there are still police here and their bollards remain in place. And that's because there are two more days of this conference to go and there are more protests planned, although not all of them are pickets like what we saw today. There's an overarching group called Disrupt Land Forces. Uh, it has plans for a rally elsewhere in the city, but there are a series of groups that are taking part in these protests. So it's possible some of them will come back here. One of the groups who took part today was Students for Palestine. They released uh, a statement this evening uh, saying that they managed to seriously disrupt the expo today. They also said that two protesters had been hospitalised, one hit with rubber bullets and another hit with a baton, and they criticised the weapons yeah, what's that with the rubber bullets? were using. Uh, in terms of tomorrow, we'll have to... Maybe they found some toys at the, at the Land Forces Conference and they just wanted to try out some new rep weaponry on some students. Hey, hey, why not? They said that this has been the biggest event for them, the police that is, um, in 20 years. So maybe they're just out there to get some practice, you know, train up some of their militarised police forces a little bit so when they really have to turn them against the people, they've at least got some real life training and they've been crushing some student protesters. Nothing like some practice beating on uh, some student protesters. Ask people from the 60s, they'll tell you all about it. To wait and see how the protests unfold. But in terms of today, uh, the convention managed to unfold inside despite what was happening out here. And the yeah, that's a really good point. The expo was able to unfold peacefully, not a problem, thanks to the police efforts outside. That's the real nugget in this whole ABC report right here, that there were protests over something that is, you know, very, very questionable in terms of like, I keep calling it the, the merchants of death and people using their democratic right to demonstrate against it. And the police protected those private interest, interests and did a very good job of it. And the expo was able to continue and will do, do so for the next couple of days. Respondent Andrew Green was there. This is what we're protecting. Inside people. Australia's largest weapons fair, a glimpse of the latest lethal technology. An uncrewed ground vehicle meant to take soldiers away from the dirty, dull and dangerous. Hundreds of defence firms are showing off their wares at this year's International Land Forces Exhibition. Inside Melbourne's Convention Centre, several Israeli companies trying to sell weapons to Australia that are battle-tested in the Middle East. Yeah, I wonder how they got battle-tested. Hey? Shooting them at Palestinians, hey, I wonder. Bit of target practice there for you. Maybe that's where the cops are learning their tactics from, maybe from the Israelis. And our knowledge and the know-how from uh, the last uh, three and four decades. Senior military officers yeah. from across the world are also here to exchange ideas on improving land warfare. Defence and security, that is preserving and protecting Australia's and Australians' way of life and our national interest is a whole of nation endeavour. And protests outside don't seem to be causing much concern. I'm proud to lead an army that for 123 years has been defending the right of Australians to protest peacefully. So far, the massive... See, and here's the massive contradiction here, okay? So, like, all these people inside the building are protecting your interests and your right to exercise your democratic and civil liberties. But if you do exercise them and we paint the picture that they are appalling and disgusting and aggressive, you will be shut down, rounded up and thrown into prison. Now, like, it's just such a stark contradiction. The media is painting the picture here that all these people inside are the true protectors of freedom and democracy, while you have people outside who are actually exercising your rights within a society that is supposed to have political freedoms, where you can have free speech and you can demonstrate and you can assemble in public places and that has been non-stop under attack in this whole media hit piece these are actually the people that are exercising political freedoms and democracy and these are the people outside that are bringing death to people in the world that aren't you know part of this kind of whole free market system and democratic world they are attacking people 
like literally out there in the globe attacking and killing people and these guys are exer exercising political freedoms and they have the gall inside to say we're doing you all a favor and allowing you to do this but don't go ahead and do it because we'll shut it down it just the contradiction is incredible it is it's so stuck and it doesn't make any sense like why would they even show this in this piece like what point are they trying to prove here it is generally confusing but I guess it just kind of reinforces their narrative that, hey, good guys inside, bad guys outside. Remember. This presence both inside and outside the convention center has managed to keep all protesters at bay. This so-called ring of steel has done its job, but See, there that's are still what this is about. two days to go. Andrew Green, ABC News, That's what this Melbourne. is all about. Keeping those dirty students and protesters off these, these, you know, people that are just trying to, you know, get together and talk about global warfare and how they can rain, you know, death and destruction upon, you know, third world countries, basically. Let's let them, let them trade in weapons of dis mass destruction and warfare. Come on, just let them have a go. It's the Australian way. Just be fair. Now, this has been a great piece in understanding propaganda in the capitalist and free market system this is how the media portrays things in the interest of the establishment and will warp stories away from people that are clearly exercising political freedoms and their democratic rights in a free society like this and turn that into public enemy number one and so we just need to be able to call out this propaganda for what it is it's very important um, to be able to articulate it well and, and tell other people so they can start to see what it is that is really going on. Because, you know, this is all the steps that are taken towards authoritarianism. And, you know, while people are, you know, hesitant to kind of um, go after the police or criticize them for doing their job, they are a tool of the establishment. So let's not make it personal about whether these police officers were doing their job or not. I'm sure they were doing what they were told, but they are being used as pawns in a larger game. They are there to protect private property and private interests. In this case, for the global military industrial complex. Pretty despicable stuff. Very despicable stuff. So thank you for coming along this on this journey with me. We've picked out some really good propaganda here. Um, and I think there's a lot to learn from this scenario. If you liked this video, give it a like, subscribe for more. And please remember, I am, you are, we are a mystery.